come again to this particular session. So in the last one, we have had a discussion with respect to what we call calculation of interest and the first method we saw gross stallment case, then pure stallment case, then when cash price is not given. And now we are picking up a question. We are picking up a question which is a topic in fact with respect to calculation of interest only and it is pretty strong one, correct? And uh, generally in the long question, you will not face this sort of situation when cash price is not given and rate of interest is also not given. In this question, neither cash price nor rate of interest is given. That is very important for you to understand. Correct. So question states that X and company 1.24, X and company purchased a motor car on 1-4-2019 and on higher purchase system they acquired. They paid 60,000 as cash down and balance in four installment of 55, 50,000, 45, 45 and 40,000. Each installment comprising equal amount of cash price at the end of each accounting period. At the end of each accounting period, question says that whatever installments are given to us, all the installment contain equal amount of cash price. So if if installment contains equal amount of cash price, that means difference is taking, whatever difference is taking place, that is because of interest. It is as simple as that. Are you getting my point or not? Because we know that cash price portion plus interest is always equal to installment. That is, whenever we say installment, it means gross installment. Correct? Now, if our cash price is same, correct? If our cash price is same and gross installment are different, gross installments are different, that means this difference is because of interest, because of interest. Is it clear to you or not? So we can at least say that in this particular question, the difference in the installment is because of interest. Now, whatever information is given to us, first of all, what you are supposed to do, simply write the down payment. Simply write the first installment, then second installment, then your third installment, then your fourth installment, and you will get your higher purchase price, 250000 Correct? Because in this particular question, it is given that amount of cash price is absolutely same or equal. So we may say that difference in installment amounts are due to interest. Correct? Due to interest. So under such questions, when cash price is not given and interest is not given, correct, generally you will be given this sort of information that installment comprises of equal amount of cash price. Now, the first thing which you are supposed to do in this particular question in order to solve such particular question, what you are supposed to do, under your first step, under your first step, first of all write, presume, Presume a cash price portion equal to x. Presume it equal to x and presume interest because two variables are missing and presume interest as i. Correct? Is it clear to you? Then under the second step, under the second step, what you do to make you understand, I am making a tabular chart. One, two, three. In fact, one more installment. Now we have been given that down payment is equal to 60,000. Down payment is equal to 60,000. We have been given that first installment is equal to 55,000. So right here 55,000. We have been also given second installment as 50,000. There are four installment in this question. Third installment is 45,000. And your fourth installment is equal to 40,000. 
correct now just a moment ago i told you that we are presuming that cash price is equal to x cash price is equal to x that mean as far as last installment is concerned i can write it in this manner x which is cash price plus interest is equal to installment and installment is equal to 40000 so i can write it in this manner x plus i is equal to 40000 now i will write the second installment sorry the installment preceding to this one i will write it in this manner x this installment precedes this installment so first i will presume cash price because cash price is same plus this time i have written 2i 2i is equal to 40000 is it clear to you why i have written 2i because this installment precedes this one correct now similarly i will write the second installment as x plus 3i is equal to 50000 from the reverse order you take interest as 1 2 and 3 and then as far as this installment is concerned first installment x plus 4i is equal to 55000 correct so first of all you will have to frame equations like this you will have to start from the fourth one then you have to move to the next one preceding one then preceding one and so on in reverse order correct once you have framed this equation now under step third what you are supposed to do third step under step number three now all you have to do is subtract what we call this in fact you can subtract any equation from the preceding one but just to make the point little bit more clear let us say the first installment is x plus 4i is equal to 55000 if from this installment if from this installment i am going to subtract this installment because i am subtracting now pay attention this is x x and there is no sign before it that means it is positive x but now i am subtracting so i will write minus x here it is written plus 3i so i am going to write minus 3i because now i have to subtract and this is positive 50000 so i will write minus 50000 now i will solve this equation minus x plus x will get cancelled it will get cancelled correct and plus 4i minus 3i will be equal to i only why i you will say sir it is equal to 1i no doubt about it it is equal to 1i but i itself means 1i correct is equal to 5000 so now we know that interest is equal to 5000 or i is equal to 5000 now just have a look over here fourth step under the fourth step what you are supposed to do as far as your first installment is concerned the first installment is equal to 55000 no doubt about that it is given to you correct and in equation form you have written first installment as x plus 4i 4i is equal to 55000 correct so now I can say x plus because i is equal to 5000 so 4 into 5000 is equal to 55000 correct now x will be equal to 55000 and 4 into 50 is 20000 I will take it to the right hand side I will write 20000 so in this manner i have been able to determine that x is equal to 35000 now what is x what is x x is cash price portion that mean as far as first installment is concerned in the first installment cash price portion is 35000 
and total installment is equal to 55,000. So quite obviously interest means interest must be equal to 20,000. So this is how you have been able to determine what we call interest. Similarly, under the second installment, if I will compute the second installment, now second installment is x plus 3i is equal to 50,000. Now I will substitute the value of i p into 5,000. That is equal to 50,000 or x is equal to 50,000 minus 15,000 or x is equal to 35,000. What is x? x is your cash price portion. x is your cash price portion. Is it clear to you or not? Just wait. So now we can say that out of 50,000 which is gross installment, we may say that 35,000 is the cash price portion and balance is 15,000. Is it clear to you? Similarly, when you will take into account your third installment, you have written x plus 2i. So x plus 2i, x plus 2 into i, i is 5,000 which is equal to what is the cash price portion what is the total installment amount that is 40,000 you simply write here 40,000 so x is equal to 10,000 which is equal to 40,000 x plus 10,000 is equal to 40,000 or x is equal to 30,000 X means cash price. So out of 40,000, we may say that 30,000 is your cash price portion and 10,000 is interest. Is it clear to you? And similarly, as far as your fourth installment is concerned, X plus I is equal to, what was the amount I think? It is 45,000, sorry. It is 40,000. This is 45. Anyway, X plus I is equal to 40,000. So X plus I, I is equal to 5,000, which is equal to 40,000. Or X is equal to 35,000. That means out of 40,000, out of 40,000, your cash price is equal to 35,000 and 5,000 is interest. So now you have determined cash price and interest for each store. So now you can prepare a table like this which I have prepared for you. So this is how. Now down payment is 60,000, you will have to write down payment 60,000, no interest in it, installment amount 60,000. Now your second installment was 55,000 we saw, sorry first installment is 55 and through our computation we found out that 20,000 is the interest and 35,000 is the cash price and so on. As you can see that cash price is same in every installment, the difference is because of what we call interest. So this is how you will have to determine. This is a very important question because a concept-based question of 4-5 mark could be asked from such, uh, from what we call this topic. 1.25, 1.26, and you should be in a position to do. Now we take up what we call 1.27 and 1.28. So I will take 1.27. Yet another, this method, annuity method is hardly used in the long question, correct? But concept-based question could be asked. It is not very tough, but you will learn about it in your financial management. Correct? Tingu purchased a machine on higher purchase system for rupees 80,000. So he purchased a machine on higher purchase system. 
and down payment was made by him to the extent of 20,000 and agreeing to pay further three installment of 20,000 each. So first installment 20,000, second installment 20,000 and third installment 20,000, three more installment. Besides the what we call down payment of 20,000, three more installment total is 80,000. Correct? Interest is charged at the rate of 5% per annum. Now, question says that calculate the cash price of the machine if present value of an annuity of 1 rupee for 3 years at the rate of 5% is 2.72325. Now, this is annuity is given. Now, the concept of annuity or present value, as I told you, you will learn in your financial management. As far as it accounts, it is concerned. In order to find out the cash price, what we have to do, very simple. In order to find out the cash price, because once you will have the cash price, then this question will become a case of gross installment, because then you will have the cash price, then you will have the rate of interest. You can easily find out the interest. You have to find out cash price with the help of NVT in this particular case. So in order to find out the cash price, what we have to do, I will have to take the present value of NVT factor, which, which will always be given to us. Present value of NVT factor. Present value of NVT factor, which is given to you is 2.72325. Correct? And you have to multiply it with one annual installment. One annual installment. Now, what is your one annual installment? There are three annual installment 20, 20, 20. The amount of one installment is equal to 20,000. You have to multiply it with this much and you will be able to get cash price which is, which is equal to 74,465. Now you have the cash price, you have the rate of interest, you can easily find out rest of what we call interest. So under NVT, it is very simple. All you have to do is simply what we call take the NVT, for, the NVT factor. For example, in the next question 2.1.28, NVT factor is given to you. Simply multiply it with what we call a one annual installment. Now, in this question, it is given that buys and hire purchase system a machinery for 90,000 and payable in three annual installment. So, one annual installment will be equal to 30,000. So, this time you will have to multiply 2723 with one annual installment of 30,000 to get the cash price. That's all. Once you have the cash price, as I told you, then later on it becomes quite easy to actually. Uh, calculate the interest. Now we move over to after acquainting ourselves very thoroughly with the calculation of the interest, calculation of interest. Now we move over to the next part. The next part is related to full reposition. What we mean by full re reposition? For example, I have sold you a one machinery. I am the seller and you are the purchaser and asked and I asked you to pay some down payment and three installment. Let us say you paid the down payment, paid the first installment and you did not pay the second installment. Obviously, when you will not pay the second installment, I will warn you. And in spite of that, if you are still persistent with the failure, then in that particular case, I shall have the right to take back the asset which I have sold. And if I am going to exercise this right, that means if I am going to take back the asset, then it will be known as reposition, reposition. And full reposition means because in this case I sold you a, only one asset and I took it back. So quite obviously now nothing is left with the buyer. So it is a case of full reposition. For example, suppose if I sell you three machinery, correct? And let us say you commit a default on a particular payment. In that case, if suppose if I take back all the three machineries, then again it will be a case of full reposition. But it could be a possibility, suppose I have sold you four machineries and let us say you committed a default on a particular installment and out of four machinery, if I take back only three, 
and leave one with you, it is not known as full reposition, it will be known as partial reposition. Is it clear to you or not? So we will talk about partial reposition in the next topic, but at this moment we are going to actually concentrate over this particular topic that is full reposition. Now, as far as this particular topic, full reposition is concerned, just have a look over 2.1 first of all. In this particular question, it is given that F1 Limited purchased a machinery from F2 Limited for 5,60,000 and payment to be made 1,50,000 down and 3 installment of 1,50,000 each. 3 installment of 1,50,000 each. F1 depreciate asset at 10% per annum on return down value basis. Now question says that because of financial constants, F1 limited having paid down payment and first, first installment at the end of the first year could not pay the second installment and the seller took possession of the asset. Now in this particular case, you committed default at the time of the second installment. You paid the first down payment. You paid the first installment, you could not pay the second installment. So quite obviously now, in this particular case, F1 limited the seller, took back the asset. So it will be a case of what we call full reposition. Now under full reposition, what we are supposed to do as far as accounting is concerned, let's have a look. Once I will solve the question thoroughly for you, so that you get a complete idea regarding the full reposition. This is section 2 now. Pay attention. Section 2. As far as section 2 is concerned, question number 2.1 we are picking up. Now, as far as question 2.1 is concerned, in this particular question, what was given to us? First, let us draw a rough idea regarding the same, so that every time I, we need not require to look at the question, is it, isn't it or not? Now, in this question, it is given that cash price is 5,60,000. Cash price is given as 5,60,000, correct? And then it is given that down payment is one lakh fifty thousand. Down payment is one lakh fifty thousand. And besides that, we are supposed to pay three more installments. Three more installments, and three more installments are also of one lakh fifty thousand each. One lakh fifty thousand, one lakh fifty thousand, and one lakh fifty thousand. So if I will total it up, it will be equal to 6 lakh. Obviously, this price is cash price. 1, 2, 3. As given in the question that we paid the down payment, we paid the first installment, we did not pay the second call, the second installment, So and the asset was repurchased. So it will become a case of, as we told you, reposition. In this question, if you want to note down your higher purchase price, higher purchase price is down payment plus all is equal to 6 lakh and your cash price is 5 lakh 60 thousand. So quite obviously, your interest will be equal to 40 thousand. And you have been given in this particular question, in fact, you, ha you haven't been given rate of interest in this particular question. Rate of interest is not given in this particular question, correct? So when rate of interest is not given, how to compute interest? I We have already seen it. After gross installment, pure installment, this was the case which we took, if you remember. So first of all, calculation of interest calculation of interest.
Now I told you in order to compute the interest first of all I will have to write total higher purchase price. What is total higher purchase price? So total higher purchase price is equal to 6 lakh. From total higher purchase price you subtract down payment. Down payment 1 lakh 50 thousand. You will be left off with 4 lakh 50 thousand. This 4 lakh 50 thousand will be considered as first balance. Correct? Then we will subtract the first installment. The first installment is 1 lakh 50 thousand. We are left off with 3 lakh. This 3 lakh will be considered as second balance. And so on, second installment. As far as second installment is concerned, again 1 lakh 50 thousand. We are left off with 1 lakh 50 thousand. This 1 lakh 50 thousand will be considered as third balance. If you remember, Sorry, this is your third balance. And then, third and final installment. 1,50,000. No balance. After having computed the balances, then, interest. We will compute the interest. In order to compute the interest, if you remember, serial number of balances, amount of balance, ratio, interest. This is what we did earlier, isn't it or not? We are going to compute the what we call interest. That means we will have to allocate interest in simple words. In order to allocate the interest, I will write here first balance. I will write here second balance. I will write here third balance, if you remember. Correct? Now, what we are supposed to do after this? The amount of balances which we computed is equal to 450, 3 lakh and 150. So first of all, we will write here 450. Then we will write here 350, 350, sorry, 3 lakh. And then I will write 1,50,000. These are the balances. These are the balances given to us. And now we will take the ratio. Ratio will be 1, 2 and 3. Total interest which we computed earlier is equal to 40,000. So we will divide this interest of 40,000 in ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. Correct? So 40,000 into 3 by 6 will be equal to 20,000. 40,000 into 2 by 6 will be equal to 13,333. And 40,000 into 1 by 6, approximately 6,667. So total will be equal to 40,000. That means every installment, in fact each installment, comprises of this much of what we call interest respectively. Once you have determined the interest, your next step is, that was step number A, step number B, books of purchaser. Now you will write the books of purchaser. In the purchaser's books, first of all you will write higher vendor account if you remember. Do you remember or not? Yes sir, we remember. If you remember, okay then let me know and I will keep on asking questions of you. Higher vendor account. I think this much is enough. First, let me prepare higher vendor account. Now you presume yourself as the higher vendor. Sorry, you presume yourself as the purchaser. Because in the books of purchasing entity, we are preparing the accounts. We have purchased an asset from the higher vendor. If we are going to purchase the asset from the higher vendor, 
then our entry will be asset account debit to higher vendor. So in the first year beginning, we shall write asset account. In this case, we have acquired a machine, so I can write machine. And if you remember, I had told you earlier that this entry is always 10 with the cash price, which happens to be the cost price from the perspective of the purchaser. Then on the same day, first year beginning, you will make the down payment. So you will write here to bank. So down payment amount, you will write here 150000 Then you are going to reach the end of the first year and you will pass the entry for interest due. Your entry will be interest account debit to higher vendor. Interest. In the first installment, we just computed interest, which is equal to 20,000. Then at the end of the first year, I will make the payment, first installment to bank. First installment. And the first installment is 1,50,000. Now we are going to balance this account. And if I am going to balance, your balance will be equal to 2 balance carried down. It will be equal to 2,80,000. Your balance will be equal to 2,80,000. Correct? So as far as first year is concerned, that is over. We move over to the second year. As far as your second year is concerned, in the second year, first of all, you write balance brought down 2,80,000. Correct, 2,80,000. Then at the end of the second year, quite obviously, entry for interest due will be passed. Interest account debit to higher vendor account in the second year, 13,333 was the amount of interest. Now pay attention. At the end of the second year, at the end of the second year, if I would have had paid, suppose, if the higher purchaser would have had paid the second installment, the entry would have been to bank account, second installment. But in this case, second installment is not paid. You need not require to write it, just to make you understand. If we would have had paid, I would have written 150, then I would have simply done the balance carry down. However, in this case, default has been committed in second installment. And because of the default, the seller has taken back the asset, correct? So that means now we will have to return the machinery which we acquired. When we acquired the machinery, we wrote the entry machinery account debit to higher vendor account. So now we are going to return the machinery. So I will write here to machinery account. To machinery account. Is it clear to you? This is your balancing figure also. And this entry is because of reposition. Now you will simply balance it. Balance will be equal to 2,93,333. It means this machinery against which you were supposed to pay 2,93,333 more. See, at the end of the first year, this is the payment 2,80,000 which you are supposed to make to the what we call higher vendor. And till the end, because interest has become due, 13,333, that means by the end of the second year, 2,93,333 were supposed to be paid to the higher vendor. So at this particular value, the machinery will be returned. Is it clear to you or not? So now you have returned the machinery to the to the vendor. So till up to second year only, you will have to prepare the account. Obviously, when we are going to return the machinery, there will be loss or profit also, which we shall have to compute. And for the same, we will have to prepare the asset account. Now, I will prepare the asset account. The asset account in this case is machine account, if you remember. Isn't it or not? Machine account. In the machine account, what I am supposed to write here, first of all, I will write first year. I have purchased a machinery, so I will write here to hire vendor because in the hire vendor I have written machinery, I am going to write hire vendor. That is equal to 5,60,000. 
then I will reach the end of the second year. Uh, sorry, I will reach the end of the first year. First year end. First year end. I will charge the depreciation. The depreciation is 10%. That is 56,000. Then I will write the balance carried down. That means this asset in our view, in our view means purchaser's view because this is the rate of depreciation of the purchaser. So from the perspective of the purchaser, this particular asset is commanding a value of 5,4000 at the end of the first year. Now we move to the second year. Second year beginning, balance brought down. 5,4000. Obviously, you are going to reach the end of the second year. Because you have reached the end of the second year, again you are going to actually charge depreciation. Now, rate of depreciation is 10% on written down value basis. So, you will take 10% of this value, 50,400. 50,400. Now suppose if I subtract 50,400 from 5,4,000, suppose, suppose, just for the sake of making you understand, 5,4,000 minus 50,400, suppose if I subtract this, correct, I am getting a value of near about 4,53,600. I am getting this value. That means from the perspective of the purchaser, this asset is having a value of 4,53,600. But, higher seller took it back only for this value, only for 2,93,333. That is why, in case of reposition, the purchasing party will always have a loss. Unless and until question is wrong, to be very honest with you, the purchaser can never, ha never ever have any gain as far as reposition, whether partial or what we call whether full reposition is concerned. So difference of these two is loss, correct? Just to make you understand, otherwise you can directly also get. For example, here you have written two machinery. So you will also write here, you will also write here, this is higher vendor account. On the debit side, you have written machinery. So you will write here by higher vendor because higher vendor has now taken back the machinery. He took it back for 2,93,333. And the balancing figure now will be considered as loss. Now, if you are going to balance it, your loss will be equal to 1,60,267. Correct, that will be equal to this much, the difference of this much. How this loss is coming, I try to actually make you understand. Correct? So, this is how you will have to actually do this particular question. I hope now the concept is clear with respect to full reposition. It is not a tough one, as you must have noticed. Correct? It is not a tough one. Or is it a tough one? No, sir, it is very easy. So, if it is very easy, then it's fine. So, such questions you may be asked in the examination. Now, also, we will practice in the books of sometime, you know, this today internet is creating a bit of problem. Anyway, books of now we will write books of higher vendor. We have already seen that higher vendor generally prepares, higher vendor generally prepares higher purchaser account. We have already seen. Isn't it or not? So he will prepare higher vendor account. Uh, sorry, higher vendor account will prepare higher purchaser account. So I will write here higher purchaser. However, I had told you earlier also. 
in case if there would be repossession then he will prepare one more account that is known as goods repossessed account in this case he is repossessing the goods so that is why he will have to prepare the goods repossessed account also goods repossessed account goods repossessed account shall be prepared only when he will repossess the goods goods repossessed account so as far as vendor is concerned he is going to prepare two accounts now you consider yourself as the higher vendor seller now if you will sell the asset to the higher purchaser obviously in the first year in the beginning you are going to pass an entry higher purchaser account debit to asset account that is machine you are selling a machine to the seller to the purchaser for five lakh sixty thousand now on the same date you are going to receive down payment so you are going to write here by bank that is down payment and the amount of down payment is equal to how much that is equal to one lakh fifty thousand then you will come over to the second year and sorry first year end at the first year end interest is again for you you will credit the interest when you will credit the interest your debtors in the form of higher purchaser will increase so that is why your entry will be higher purchaser account debit to interest account so you shall write here to interest interest was 20000 in the first installment then we'll move over to the end of the first year again we are going to receive the first installment the first installment is 150000 so i shall write 150000 then i will balance it we saw balance earlier 280000 so as far as first year is concerned the task is over now we shall write here in the beginning of the second year balance brought down if i will write the balance brought down 280000 then at the end of the second year I am going to write here to interest. Interest in the second year was 13,333. At the end of the second year, we were supposed to receive second installment, but we did not receive. That means default is committed. So, we took back the asset. We took back the asset. I will write here machine. So, we will take back the machine with the balancing figure 293333 this figure reflects that this was the amount on this date which was due from the purchaser that means at this value we are going to take back over this particular machinery correct and then we will prepare a goods repossessed account although it is a mere formality so on the debit side of the goods repossessed account I will write here when we will take back the goods goods repossessed account debit to higher purchaser I will write here to higher purchaser two lakh ninety three thousand three two lakh ninety three thousand three hundred thirty three now nothing is given with respect to goods repossessed. For example, in the question it could have been given that after taking back the goods, the, per, the seller spent so much of amount. Suppose if it would have been given that the seller had spent some amount, then I would have had debited it. So it could be given in the question that after repossession, the seller spends this much of amount and then sold the asset again. Now, if it would have been given in the question that he sold the asset, I would have written here by bank sale. Then difference would have been debited or credited to profit and loss account. However, in this question, neither any expenses nor sale amount is given. So we shall simply write balance carried down. That means the selling party is still keeping this asset with themselves now 
and perhaps in future they may sell it. But at some or other point of time, surely they are going to sell off this particular asset. Is it clear to you or not? This is how you are supposed to do partial reposition. So it is not a tough one, I think so, correct? Now we pick up another question, 2.2. just have a look over 2.2 also question number 2.2 i will go through the question first i will go through the question no doubt about that first have a look over here in 2.2 what is happening i will simply tell you in this manner in 2.2 when we will study later on it is given that your cash price is 11,20,000. Cash price is 11,20,000. How much is the cash price given? 11,20,000. Correct. Further, it is given that down payment, down payment, down payment is actually equal to 3 lakhs. Then three more installments are supposed to be paid at the end of the first year, three lakh again. At the end of the second year, again three lakh. And at the end of the third year, again three lakh more is supposed to be payable by the purchaser. So this is the question actually given to you in 2.2 and in 2.2, see here, have a look. 11,20,000. Wilson brother purchased a truck from Tata Motors Limited for 11,20. Payment to be made 3 lakh down payment and 3 installment of 3 lakh at the end of each year. Correct? This is what I told you. Rate of interest is charged at 5% per annum and the buyer depreciates the truck at 10% on written down value method basis. On account of severe financial crunch, the purchaser after having paid down, paid down payment and first installment, could not pay the second installment and Tata Motors took possession of the truck. Now in this question, as I told you in the last question, it is given. The vendor, vendor means seller. The vendor after spending 25,000 on repair sold it for rupees 9 lakh. It means after repossession, they spent 25,000 and sold this truck for rupees 9 lakh. So this is the question. Now, once again, I will solve it for you. So we have seen that in this particular question also rate of interest is given to us as rate of interest is equal to 5% and rate of depreciation is 10% on written down value basis. It was given in the question that down payment was paid, first installment was paid, but default is committed at the time of second installment. Correct? This is the question. So, in order to solve this particular question, first of all, as usual, I will have to do the interest computations. Interest computation. Now, in this question, we have cash price we have what we call rate of interest so and we have gross installment so we can use the first case itself of computation of interest in the first case if you remember we write first of all cash price then we write gross installment and then we write interest and then we write cash price portion Correct. So, first of all, I will write here down payment. Sorry, before writing the down payment, let me write cash price. Cash price is 11,20,000. After having written down cash price, now I will write here down payment. 
down payment is 3 lakh in this particular question. In down payment, there is no interest. Entire payment is considered as payment for cash price portion. And interest plus cash price portion is always equal to 3 lakhs. So your zero installment is 3 lakh. After payment of 3 lakh, we are still left off with 8 lakh 20,000. 8 lakh 20,000. Now we will take the, make the first payment. The first installment is 3 lakh. How much interest this installment contains, we will compute 5% of 8 lakh 20,000. Rate of interest is 5%. So 5% of 8,20,000 is equal to 41,000, correct? You need not require to show here 8,20 into 5%. Then you subtract 41 from 3 lakh, you will be left off with 2,59,000. Subtract 2,59,000 because this is the cash price portion, you will subtract it from cash price. Now you are left off with 5,61,000. Second installment. Second installment is 3 lakh. In the second installment, interest will be 5 lakh 61,000 into 5% 28050. 28050. Now you subtract this figure from gross installment and you will be left up with 271950. However, However, now I need not require to move further because in the second installment, default has been committed. So I need to compute interest only because I need to compute interest only till up to this particular stage because default has been committed at the time of second installment. There is no need to continue with the story now. Correct? So now you have computed the interest. It's B. Books of higher purchaser. Books of higher purchaser. Now, as far as higher purchaser is concerned, higher purchaser will prepare higher vendor account as we know. So, higher vendor account. In the first year, beginning, we will purchase the asset. In this case, we are acquiring, I think, truck. Isn't it or not? Right. So, buy truck account. And the cash price is 11,20,000, so I shall write here 11,20,000. First year, beginning. Two bank. Down payment. Down payment is 3 lakhs. At the end of the first year, we will pass the entry for interest you. We computed interest in the first installment, it is equal to 41,000. Then, at the end of the first year, we shall write here to bank, the first installment, the first installment is 3 lakhs. So, your balance carried down will be, 5,61,000. At the end of the first year, your balance carried down is equal to this much. Now we come over to the second year. In the second year, we shall write here balance, in the beginning first of all, we shall write here balance brought down 5,61,000. We will reach the end of the second year, pass entry for interest due. In the second year, the interest is 28050. Correct? As you can see, in the second year, we did not pay the second installment. Correct? 
to bank. We were supposed to pay the second installment, but we did not pay the second installment. Now, what the purchaser will, what the seller will do now, the seller will take back the asset. At what value he will take back his truck? The balancing figure. What does this balancing figure reflects? This balancing figure reflects that against the, against the purchase of this truck, we were supposed to pay this much of amount. If I would compute the balance, it will be equal to 589050. So quite obviously at this value, the seller will take back the asset. Now what is the loss to us? In order to compute the loss to us in the entire scenario, I will prepare a truck account. We will write here to hire vendor. We purchased the truck for 11,20,000, I think so. Right. 11,20,000. Now we will reach the end of the first year. At the end of the first year, we will pass entry for depreciation. Correct? So I am going to write here depreciation. 1,12,000. At the rate of 10%. So balance carry down will be equal to 10 lakh 8,000. At the end of the first year, this asset in the eyes of the purchaser commands this value. Second year beginning, balance brought down 10 lakh. 8,000. Now, we will reach the end of the second year. And here we are going to write depreciation again. Depreciation is on written down value basis. So that is why it will be equal to 10080. 800. Right. 1,800,000. And then you write here by higher vendor. Because on this date, On this day, this truck was returned back to higher vendor at what value you have already written here. So you you shall write here 589050. So there will always be a loss. Now what will be the amount of loss? 3,18,150. three lakh eighteen thousand one hundred and fifty is the amount of loss. Correct? Books of purchaser. Books of now vendor. The seller. In the books of higher vendor, we shall prepare higher purchaser account. And we shall also prepare goods repurchased account. Goods repurchased account and higher purchaser account. Now we are the vendor, we are the seller. If we are going to sell the asset, you know the entire process now. So as far as first year is concerned, in the beginning, I will sell the asset to the higher purchaser. Higher purchaser account debit to truck account I would write 11,20,000. We will receive the down payment on the same day by bank down payment amount is equal to 3 lakhs. Then at the end of the year, 
एंट्री फॉर इंटरेस्ट विल बी पास्ट हायर परचेजर अकाउंट डेबिट टू इंटरेस्ट अकाउंट फोर्टी वन थाउजेंड एट द एंड ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर वी आर गोइंग टू रिसीव द फर्स्ट इंस्टॉलमेंट अमाउंट ऑफ फर्स्ट इंस्टॉलमेंट इज ऑल्सो थ्री लैक now we will balance this one and the balancing figure will be 561000 561000 now we will write here second year beginning balance brought down Five lakh sixty one thousand. Now we will come to the end of the second year. We will pass the entry for interest. Interest we computed at the end of the second year was two eight zero five zero, and we were supposed to receive the second installment. but unfortunately the second installment wasn't received by us so we took back the asset correct we shall write here by truck and the amount which we computed was 5890 0500 at this value we will take back the asset so as far as this account is concerned it's over now now we are going to write goods repurchased account goods repurchased account in the goods repurchased account we shall write here two higher purchase 5890 now here in this particular question it was given that the seller is spent some amount to bank on repairs he spent 25000 rupees and then he sold this for 9 lakh quite obviously the seller will not keep the asset for a long time he will sell it to somebody else and try to earn some extra profit correct so in this case the profit will be equal to 285 285950 this is how under reposition accounting is done is it clear to you or not yes sir this was question number Two point two. Now we will come over to two point three. Now, as far as two point three is concerned, let's see what is given in this particular question. Mister Seven purchased a machine or hire purchase system. It is given to you on first of January two thousand eighteen. Correct. The cash price is actually fourteen thousand nine hundred. Now, cash price is given to you. The terms of the the terms of the agreement provided a payment of four thousand at the end of every six months over two years. Over two years, in two years of time, we are supposed to make the payment, and at every six months, we are supposed to make a payment of four thousand. Correct. The first payment was to be made on 30th of june 2018 now pay attention this time the machine was purchased on 1st of january 2018 machinery has been purchased on 1st of january 2018 just to make the point little bit more clear in this case what is happening just wait this is the beginning of the first year correct that is 1st of january 2018 okay i will write the date 1st january 
on this date we purchased an asset having a cash price of 14900 14900 the first year will end let us say somewhere here that is 31st of 12 2018 the first year will end somewhere here and obviously our second year will end somewhere here on 31st of 12 2019 the question says in this particular case that on the day on which we acquired the asset no down payment was made in this question there is no down payment because the question says that uh, the first payment was made on 30th of june 2018 that means on 30th of June 2018, the first installment was paid. Correct? This is your first installment. Obviously, your second installment will fall due over here. Your second installment will fall due. Correct? And then, you are supposed to make payment of 4000 at the end of every six months. So, then next six months will end on 30th of June 2019, correct? So here you are supposed to make the third installment and obviously then next six months will fall on 31st of 12, 2019 and you are supposed to make fourth installment over here. You are supposed to make a payment of 4,000, 4,000, 4,000 and 4,000 each. All in all, you are supposed to pay 16,000. No down payment in this particular question. Further, you are given that rate of interest is 6% per annum. A rate of interest 6% per annum is also given to you. Mr. Seven wrote off 10% depreciation on reducing balance system and closed his books on 30th of June every year. Now, in this particular question, this line is also important that on 30th of June, every year he closes his books. He could not pay the installment due on 30th of June 2019 and vendor took back possession of the machine. So in this question, it is given that on this installment, 30th June 2019, the purchaser could not make the payment as far as this installment is concerned. That means down payment Actually, in this question, there is no down payment. First installment and second installment has been paid. So, on the third installment, default has been committed. Correct? And rate of interest is 6% and depreciation on reducing balance system is 10%. This is the question. Actually, you can do this question. But, okay, if you want me to do, I will do it for you. Don't worry about that. For that, I will have to create a space. Okay, we will do this question. We will take five minutes of break, correct, as usual, and then we will continue with that.
So welcome again. So I will do this question for you. Now in this question, what is given to us, I have already explained so we can straightway start with the question, correct? We have, we have already analyzed this one. This is 2.3, I think so. 2.3. So in 2.3, first of all, what we are going to do, we are going to compute interest as usual. In this question, cash price is given, rate of interest is also given. So in order to compute the interest, we can follow gross installment method. So first of all, write cash price. Then write gross installment. Write the interest cash price portion. Now cash price which was given to us was 14,900. 14,900. Correct. Uh, on 1 1 2018, we purchased the asset. Unfortunately or fortunately, we did not make any down payment. So, it's still 14,900 is due. However, in this question, next installment will become due after six months, that is on 30th of June 2018. Correct. This will be your first installment. Amount of first installment is 4,000. Sorry, amount of gross installment is 4,000. Now, in order to compute the interest, what you are supposed to do, what you are supposed to do here, in order to compute the interest, see here, 4,000, sorry, 14,900, this is the amount and rate of interest is 5% in the question. And for six months, you will have to compute the interest. Correct? This is how you are going to compute the interest. Is it clear to you or not? So 447 will be your amount of interest. Subtract 447. Subtract 447 from 4000 to get what we call your cash price portion, which will be equal to 3. 553. Five, I think so. Then we are going to move over to first let me subtract this also. So that means after this payment amount due is equal to 11,347. 11,347 is the amount due. Correct? And now we will move up to 31st of December 2018 when second installment will become due your second installment gross installment is 4000 now what is the interest portion 11347 into 5 percent into 6 by 12 this is how you are going to compute the amount of interest correct so that will be equal to near about 340 approximately 3660 will be your cash price portion. 3660. Now, no need to go further as default, no, default hasn't been committed at this stage. Still, we will have to move further. 7687. Third installment will become due on 30th of June 2019. And in this installment, default has been committed. Default has been committed in this installment, so you will have to compute the interest. That is 7687 into 5% into 6 by 12. So your interest will be equal to 231 and your cash price portion will be equal to 3769. You simply write here 3769 and now you need not require to move further because now the default has been committed. After having computed the amount of interest, step number B, now books of purchaser. As far as books of purchaser are concerned, 
you will prepare a hire vendor account correct hire vendor account it is given in the question that on 1 1 2018 you have acquired a machine and the cash price is 14900 on the same day you are going to make down payment down payment in this question is not there so we will reach the end of the accounting year that is on 30th of june 2000 18 30th of june 2018 interest is actually 447 and 30th of june 2018 we will make the first installment to bank when you will pay the first installment the amount of first installment is 4000 amount of first installment is this much so balance carried down will be equal to 11347 correct this is your balance so as far as first year is concerned that is over now we come over to the next accounting year next accounting year will begin from next date after 30th of june next date will be 31st first of july 2000 18 you will write here balance brought down 11347 next installment will become due on 31st of december 2018 this is your second installment but first entry for interest when you will compute the interest we computed the interest interest was 340 and on 31st of 12 2018 we will make the second installment second installment is 4000 now generally what happens after paying the installment we start balance carried down but in this question you need to understand that in this particular question you need to understand that your accounting year is ending on 30th of june so don't close it at this moment correct simply move over to the next date the next date will be after 31st of December 2018, next date will be 30th of June 2019, next six months. And this is also your accounting date. You will write first, first you will write here interest. Now as far as interest is concerned, correct, we computed that it was equal to 231. So on 30th of June 2018, we were supposed to pay the third installment. But unfortunately we did not pay it so now the seller will take back the asset so machine will be taken back we will write here machine machine now we will simply compute the balance amount 7918 so at this value machine will be taken back and how much is the loss how much is the loss that you can compute now by preparing a machine account in the machine account you will simply write here 1 1 2018 first of all you are going to write here to hire vendor 14900 and then you are going to come to the end of the accounting year because your accounting year will fall after six months itself so you will write here by depreciation when you will compute the depreciation it will be equal to 14,900 into 10 percent into 6 by 12 correct for six months from this particular date till up to this particular date it will be equal to 745 so the balance carried down at the end of this accounting year will be equal to 14,155. 14,155. Now, next year will begin on 1-7-2018 and you will write here balance brought down 
the balance brought down is equal to 14,155. Balance is 14,155. Is it clear to you? Now, we will come over to the end of the next accounting year. That is 30th of June 2019. Depreciation is provided at the end of the accounting year. So, 30th of June 2019. Now, we will provide depreciation for full one year. Correct? And depreciation actually in this particular question, 14, written down value basis, 14,155 into 10% for full one, one year, we are going to provide the depreciation. 1415. Now, in this question, if I will subtract 1415 from this figure, 14,155, correct? This shows that in the eyes of the purchaser, the value of this machinery is at the end of 30th of June 2019 is 14,155 minus 1455. Now, this asset has been taken back by the vendor. This asset has been taken back by, by the vendor at 7918. 7918. So, that is why the balancing figure will be considered as loss because he will take the asset at lower value, correct? So, 4822 will be the amount of loss. So, this is how you need to do this question, correct? I hope you got a fair idea regarding the full reposition, not a very tough task. And similarly, question number 2.4, you can do question number 2.4 and Question has been given in a solved manner, so should not be a big issue for you. And then 2.5, 2.5 you try to do, 2.6 also, all these questions are manageable question, correct? And then in the next session, we shall start with partial reposition. It's an extremely important topic from the examination point of view. So, we'll talk about partial reposition in the next session. Till then, it's goodbye.